everyone my name is Halsey welcome 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 back to another international Sunday school lesson where we give an overview of the lessons based on the international uniform lessons from the precepts for a living commentary don't forget to give a like a share subscribe or even leave a comment so today this lesson today starts the spring quarter the theme for this quarter will be God frees and redeems all the lessons in March will be focusing on liberating Passover Bible scriptures for today is from Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 through 8 then verses 11 then ver chapter 2 verses 64 through 70 lesson title is Babylonian captivity ends before we start our lesson, let's open up in prayer. Lord, thank you for this time, this time of sharing your holy word. We thank you for this opportunity that you has once again allow us to fellowship one to another. As we go into this lesson, Lord, we pray that you will release the power of understanding. We pray that as we learn more about you, Lord, you will help us to see the purpose that you have for our lives. Lord, we thank you for your able to give us boldness. Give us the boldness that we need and the strength that we need to go out and be of a blessing to somebody, to encourage someone, oh God, to keep the faith. We pray that you will, oh God, stir our heart, stirs our heart, oh God, and help us to be that example. Somebody need to see that you are our true and living God. Somebody need to know that you are a God of restoration. Somebody need to know that you save, you deliver, and you set free. Somebody need to know that they can depend on you. We thank you for these lessons and how you use these lessons to encourage us so we can encourage others. We give you praise for all things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, our lesson today will be outlined and will be divided into four sections. Section number one will deal with the revelation of a stirred heart. Ezra 1 verse 1. Section number two will deal with the proclamation of a stirred heart. Verses 2 through 4. Section number three will deal with the response of a stirred heart. Section number four, verses five through 11. Section number four will deal with the gifts of stirred hearts. And that's chapter two, verses 64 through 70. Before, before we go into our printed text, let's add a little bit of background to our lesson. So as we know, the children of Israel had rebelled against God. But God in his mercy, his, his, he was always merciful to them. And he would send different prophets to warn them, to warn them about their ways. Warn them concerning their ways both Israel and Judah, also known as the, Southern, the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. But the people would mock the prophets and they would despise God's word and they would rebel and they would disobey until the wrath of God kindled against them. And so as a result, God allowed them to be taken away into captivity. At this point in our lesson, we're focusing on, on Judah, the southern kingdom. And they were taken away into captivity by the Babylonian, Nebuchadnezzar, where they live in captivity for 70 years. So, so what, was, what was Judah's offense? What was Judah's crime? Well, if we go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 25, and we start reading at verse 2. And it says, Jeremiah the prophet says to the people in Judah and Jerusalem, For the past 23 years, 
from the 13th year of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, until now. The Lord has been giving me his messages. I have faithfully passed them on to you, but you have not listened. Again and again, the Lord had sent you his prophets, but you have not listened or even tried to hear it. Each time the message was this, turn from the evil road you are traveling and from the evil things you are doing. Only then will I let you live in this land that the Lord gave to you and your ancestors forever. Do not make me angry by worshiping the idols you have made. Then I will not harm you. But, but you would not listen to me, says the Lord. You made me furious by worshiping your idols, bringing on bringing on yourselves all the disaster you now suffer. Did you hear that? What happened? They brought it on to themselves. When, when we do not listen, when we do not obey God's word, we too, like Judah, we too will automatically, automatically bring in disaster, suffering, whatever, when we do not listen and when we do not obey God's word, we too, like Judah, will bring it on ourselves. So, what is the lesson? What is the lesson for us today? That God's words must be obeyed. We must obey God's word. God's word is to be obeyed. Okay, and so and so our lesson today will begins with the returning of the people after serving 70 years in captivity in Babylon. We will now look at section one and it deals with the revelation of a stirred heart and that's Ezra chapter one verses one start reading at verse one and it says in the first year of King Cyrus of Persia the Lord fulfilled the prophecy he had given through Jeremiah he stirred the heart of Cyrus to put his proclamation in writing and to send it throughout his kingdom. King Cyrus was chosen by God according to prophecy in Isaiah chapter 45. According to Isaiah chapter 45, starting at verse 1, reading from King James Version, and it says, This is what the Lord says of Cyrus, his anointed one whose right hand he will empower before him. Mighty kings will be paralyzed with fear. Their fortress gates will be open, never again to shut against him. This is what the Lord says. I will go before you, Cyrus, and level the mountains. I will smash down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron jump to verse 4 and it says and why have I called you for this work it is for the sake of Jacob my servant Israel my chosen one I call you by name when you did not know me I am the Lord there is no other God I have prepared you even though you do not know me so all the world from east to west will know there is no other God. I am the Lord and there is no other God. And so, as we can see, God is faithful to his promise. He stirs the heart of King Cyrus to fulfill promise. The promise that he, the prophecy that he made uh, through the prophet Jeremiah. Scripture lets us know that the king's heart is like a stream of water directed by the Lord. He turns it wherever he pleases. And that's Proverbs chapter 21 verses 1. God has ultimate authority over every single ruler. No matter how powerful they think they are, 
God has authority over them. And that is why we should be praying for them and asking God to order their footsteps and to direct their path. Amen. Amen. So verses one let, lets us know that God stirs Cyrus's heart to make a proclamation, helping the people to go back to Judah. Question, how has God stirred your hearts to help to restore someone whom, for whatever reason, has lost everything? As we can see here that God used Cyrus to help the people back, to protect them, to provide resources for them to go back to rebuild, restoring them back into the promised land. So how are we helping others? What 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 are we doing or how are we showing them those that especially in this time, in this pandemic time, those that lost jobs and lost housing and lost personal possessions and they're down and out, how are we encouraging them and letting them know that God is faithful to his word? What are we doing to help them to get back on their feet? If we are not doing it yet, we need to pray and ask God to stir our hearts for the plight of others just like he stirs the heart of King Cyrus. Amen. Amen. Also, also, King Cyrus was a pagan king. King Cyrus was a, a non-believer, a pagan king. And he was stirred and he obediently answered the call. So that alone should let us know that we should be even more so thinking about it. Being stirred into action. Amen. Amen. We will now move to section two and it deals with proclamation of a stirred heart. And that's Ezra chapter one verses two through verses four and it reads this is what king cyrus of persia says the lord the god of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth he has appointed me to build him a temple at jerusalem which is in judah any of you who are his people may go to jerusalem in judah to rebuild his temple of the lord the god of israel who lives in Jerusalem, and may your God be with you. Wherever this Jewish remnant is found, let their neighbors contribute towards their expenses by giving them silver and gold, supplies for the journey, and livestock, as well as a voluntarily offering for the temple of God in Jerusalem. And so once again, here we see Cyrus gave the proclamation. The word pro proclamation, it carries the idea of publicly announcing, announcing something publicly, having a clear declaration of something of great importance. And this, this proclamation permitted the, the people to go back, not just to go back, but to go back and work together to accomplish the huge task of rebuilding the temple. And that signifies teamwork, giving everyone an opportunity to partake, to contribute what they had, what they could afford, even those, even the ones that was not going back even those that was staying back in babylon even those people also have the opportunity to be a part of the big big project that was ahead of them amen so question how are you or myself helping how are we helping how are we helping out 
with the upkeeping of our local place of worship. How are we contributing? How are we being a contributor? By way of words, deeds, or action. We can see King Cyrus obediently follow God's order. Likewise, where we are today, and Jesus left us with many examples. And, and Jesus himself, he served as an example of an obedient servant. And he should be viewed as our model for not only encouraging us, but for us to encourage others to serve the Lord obediently. In the book of Matthew, we'll go to Matthew, Matthew chapter 20, and we'll look at verse 28, uh, reading from New Living um, Translation. And Jesus here talks about his purpose of serving. And he said in Matthew chapter 20, verses 28, For even I, the Son of Man, came here not to be served, but to serve others and to give my life as a ransom for many. Jesus served others by rebuilding lives, by putting back lives together, by transforming lives. And that's what God was doing with Judah, using King Cyrus to restore back the people back to him restoring back that relationship that was separated, restoring relationship, serving one another. People of Judah, they returned back, not just to rebuild building, but more so, more so to rebuild their lives, to reconnect it back to their God to, and to serve one another. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and uh, starting at verse 19, reading from King, New, New Living Translation. And Paul here reminds us, he reminds us that we are a temple for the Lord, serving one another. And verse 19 says, so now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. We are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We whom believe are carefully joined together becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also joined together as part of this dwelling place where God lives by his spirit. And so here we can see Paul lets us know that God's house, the church is not a building. The church is a group of believers believing in Jesus Christ. Jesus lives in us and he shows himself to a watching world through us. The world will see that God is love and that Jesus Christ is Lord as we, the church group of believers, as we live in harmony with each other in accordance with what God says in his word. Amen. We, we are citizens of God's kingdom and members of his household. And again, again, I'll ask, in this time of pandemic and the new norm, we, we should be making sure that we are taking time out to reach out to our brothers and our sisters and to give a helping hand by way of words, by way of deeds, or by way of actions. Amen. Amen. We will now look at 
section three, and it deals with the response of a stirred heart, verses five through 11. It reads, then God stirred the hearts of the priests and the Levites and the leaders of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin to go to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple of the Lord. And all their neighbors assisted by giving them articles of silver and gold, supplies for the journey and livestock. They gave them many valuable gifts in addition to all the voluntary offerings. King Cyrus himself brought out the articles that King Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the Lord's temple in Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of his own God. Verse 8, Cyrus directed Metrodad, the treasurer of Persia, to count these items and present them to Sheshbazar, the leader of the exiles returning to Judah. In all, there were 5,400 articles of gold and silver. Sheshbazar brought all these along when the exile went from Babylon to Jerusalem. So right here we can see how the Lord stirred the hearts of the leaders, the spiritual leaders first. Question, why was it important for the Lord to stir the heart of the spiritual leaders first? Well, for one, for one, we know that God is always a God of order. Where there's no vision, the people will perish. Somebody has to lead. God is always using somebody to lead his people back into re relationship with him, restoring back relationships. He's still doing that today. He's still doing that today. He never gives up on us, no matter how far we stray. He will stir our hearts. He will stir somebody's heart to pull us back. And he will use extraordinary means to accomplish his purpose. Amen. Understand. How has God stirred your heart or mine? Or is stirring your heart or mine to do something that will restore someone back to him? And how have you responded to that call? It could be as simple it could be as simple as reading a Bible verse each day, just encouraging someone to read a encouraging Bible verse each day. Amen. Doing something, being called to action. We will now move to section four and it deals with the gifts of stirred hearts. And that's Ezra chapter two, verses 64 through 70. And it says, so a total of 42,360 people returned to Judah. In addition to 7,337 servants and 200 singers, both men and women, they took with them 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. When they arrived at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the family leaders made voluntarily offerings towards the rebuilding of God's temple on its original site. And each leader gave as much as he could. The total of their gifts came to 61,000 gold coins, 6,250 pounds of silver, and 100 robes for the priests. So the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, the temple servants, and some of the common people settled in villages near Jerusalem. The rest of the people returned to their own towns throughout Jerusalem. We can see here how the people came together. 
They were working together, harmonizing together, giving together for the common goal of rebuilding the temple. God wants us to give what we have until we can give what we should because God loves a cheerful giver. Finally, finally, the people were able to return back to the promised land and reconnected back to their God in relationship and in worship. We should pray, we should pray, and we should ask God to help us to be that light, that ray of hope in this dark and dying world that we're living in. That someone may see something in us that will cause them to want to come and connect and reconnect with Christ. God has given us the greatest gift in Jesus Christ. Have you or myself shared this gift with anyone by way of words, by way of deeds, or by way of actions? The Word of God, the Word of God is the only thing that corruption cannot touch. Validity of God's Word cannot be removed. The reality of God's word cannot be deteriorate and it cannot die. Whose truth cannot decay. This is the true word of God, the living truth of God, the living word of God. Who is it? Jesus Christ himself. In John chapter 14, starting at verse 6. John 14 and starting at verse 6. And this is Jesus talking. And Jesus said this about himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one can come to the Father except through me. If you had known who I am, then you would have known who my Father is. From now on, you know him. And have seen him. Lord Jesus, thank you. This passage right here is one of the most important passages in the scripture. It says, how can we know the way to God? How? Only through Christ Jesus. Jesus is the way because he is both God and man. By uniting our lives with his life, we are, re we are uniting our our life with God. Trust Jesus to take you to the Father and all the benefits of being God's children today. When? Today. Amen? Amen. Jesus here says he is the way. As the way, he is the path to the Father. As the truth, he is the reality of all of God's promises. As the life, he joins his divine life with ours, both now and forever. Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen. Amen. This will conclude our lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, please give a like, a share, subscribe, or even leave a comment. But most of all, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time, bye-bye.